quite an introduction and a lot of complimentary things said uh, of me by my dear friend Chad. And uh, I've learned something. I learned it from one of the older preachers that's passed on, uh, that when all of these compliments come, take them like you do perfume. You know, uh, perfume is good to smell, but don't swallow the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got it in you. Yeah, just, just don't swallow it because if you swallow it, 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 it it'll make you sick. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ed, and I love this young man very much, and he is really committed to the cause of Christ. I uh, I'm enjoying my stay here. I appreciate where the brethren have put me at Hampton Inn, and everything that we need to be comfortable has been provided. And, uh, and the hospitality has just been super. I mean, the way that I'm being fed, I mean, this food, 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 and just got through eating a, a fine meal that I selected on my own, but it's hard to turn down all of this good food. You're really putting it to me, church, and I'll tell you what, it just seems like that your joy is fulfilled as you see me feel full. Okay. All right, so keep, let's keep me, keep me happy. <laughs> thank you, brethren, and thank our brothers who uh, participated thus far. We, we really appreciate the, uh, Brother McDaniels for the good job he's doing in the singing, and we also want to thank Brother Lovelady for that lovely, wonderful prayer that he sent up to the throne of grace. And I hope and I pray that uh, uh, in our audience, I know we have members of the body of Christ from other congregations. I want to thank you for your presence. Uh, but most of all, I hope that we have some here that may not share our religious convictions, may not be members of the Church of Christ, but through the influence of someone, or more than one, uh, you are here. Uh, I know this is a working congregation. I was informed by uh, one of the elders and others that how, how they went out and, and, and knocked doors, at least passed out flyers and various things in order to encourage people to come to the meeting. And this is what we're going to have to do. And when you do your part, then we leave the rest to God. Now, uh, uh, the lesson that I, I want to consider this evening, and I might have, brother, you might have to do a little reading for me. The preaching brother's head is ready to go, and the elder, and you, you guys be ready to do a little reading for me. First, get me Philippians 3, I believe about the uh, uh, 16th and 17 verses, either one of you all that want to read. And, it, and after this passage is read, it'll be upon the basis of this passage uh, that I have my lesson for consideration this evening. And surely and hopefully, if there's any one, more than one, that's not a member of the body of Christ, or if you're a member, this lesson should encourage you and should strengthen you and also give you an insight into perhaps a condition that you may have a dangerous position that you may be in even tonight and you may not be aware of it. Uh, so uh, let's start out with this passage of scripture and we'll move from that uh, and, and, and give you the subject for consideration. Uh, just several verses, start reading Philippians about three and about, well, you can, you can start at the 16th verse if you wish. Nevertheless, Nevertheless Read on. Let us walk by the same rule, mm -hmm. and let us mind the same thing. Yes. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us. Now watch this read carefully now what he said. Mark them what? Which walk so as ye have us for an example. Yes. Read on. Many walk for whom I have told you. Many walk for whom I have told you. Read. What a terrible thing to be. Read on. Whose end is destruction. End is destruction. God is, is God is their belly. Whose glory is, is in their shame. In their shame. Mind, Read. Yes. It may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, 
according to the working whereby yes. he is able even to uh, subdue all things unto himself. Oh, right, that's good. That's good. The key thing that I want you to notice here is that Paul was warning the Philippian brethren and, 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 and telling them about uh, that there, there are some people who are enemies. And of all the people in the world, or the person in the world to be an enemy, an enemy of, they were enemies of the cross of Christ. Uh, back there, many of the Jews rejected Christ and, and disowned him, said we have no God but Caesar. They put him to death. And even after that, they still were enemies of Christ because they did not feel that he was the true Messiah that was to come. Uh, and uh, they were looking for another. And they thought they had done God a favor by putting Christ to death. But we know and the early saints knew that he was indeed the Christ. The evidence was overwhelming that he was the son of God. But in spite of that, these people were ignorant enough to become enemies of the cross of Christ. Now, uh, we got enemies of the cross of Christ today. Those Jews who are still looking for the Messiah to come, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. And of course, infidels are enemies of the cross of Christ. And, and the Muslims who degrade Christ and said the only true prophet, the greatest prophet was Mohammed and they degrade Jesus. Oh, uh, there are a lot of enemies of the cross of Christ. But you might say, well, I don't think even with this audience tonight, we don't have any of those here. Uh, I expect we do. And as a matter of fact, my lesson is going to deal with a type of enemy of the cross of Christ that you may not be aware of. And we may have some enemies of the cross of Christ here tonight. But in order to get you to understand that, the kind of enemy that I'm talking about is not an open, avowed enemy, but unconscious enemies of the cross of Christ. That's going to be my subject that I'm dealing with, unconscious enemies of the cross of Christ. When you're an enemy of someone, uh, 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 they, and, 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 and they are unconscious that, uh, the, you're unconscious that you are an enemy, uh, that can be very devastating, as bad as being an open and avowed enemy. Unconscious enemies of the cross of Christ. Let me give you an illustration or two is how bad it is to be an unconscious enemy uh, of someone. There's a story of a man who he loved his daughter dearly. Uh, and uh, it was a lazy old summer evening and he was uh, sitting out with the boys playing cards and he got some devastating news. They said there was a terrible accident down the road there. And said, hate to tell you that, but your daughter was, was in it. And, she, and we hear that she is terribly wounded, very bad shape. He jumped in his car, started out down there, and he got just a little ways and his car, just played out, out of gas. You know how it is when gas is high and you're running on fumes, it don't take long before uh, you, you, you come to a halt. And so he was in desperation. And uh, he got out of his car and he tried to flag somebody down. Everybody ignored him. And, and he was worried about her, and he flagged, and they ignored him. He thought about his old 45 in his car. He got looked in the glove compartment and got it out. And when he got it out, he saw a car coming toward him, and he did like that to stop. It frightened the man, so he stepped on his brakes there. And, and he said, get on out of this car. Let me have this car. He jumped out and let him have it. And he got down there, and true it was, his daughter was in terrible shape. And she looked like she might be dying. And he uh, was holding her. And oh, why don't the doctors all oh, holding her? And finally, here come a doctor, a medic, uh, and, and had his little bag. And instead of him telling the doctor, go on and see what you can do for her, he was mad at the doctor. He said, what kind of doctor are you? And, and about that time, his, his daughter expired. He said, if you'd have been here, my daughter would have been living. What kind of doctor are you? I'm going to sue you. I'm all kind of stuff he was saying about it. The doctor said, well, I was getting here as fast as I could, but some crazy man pulled a pistol on me and, 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 caused, and, and caused me to uh, 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 stop. I just had to let, let him have the car. And, well, you know what happened there, don't you, then? Well, that's what it was. He was his worst enemy. He was his daughter's worst enemy. He was an unconscious enemy of his daughter. So you can become an unconscious enemy 
the enemy of someone without even realizing it that it happens. And I could give you a lot of stories like that where people will uh, become unconscious enemies. There's another case, and then I'll get into the meat of the lesson, uh, where this uh, young girl, uh, she graduated, and to celebrate her graduation, uh, she went out with her boyfriend, and, and uh, they had a wreck, and she was killed. Ooh, what a tragedy. And when her daddy found it out, and found out who this fellow was she was with, and, and he wanted to get on his case, and you know how my daughter is, she doesn't drink, and you take her out like this, and oh, he was carrying on about his daughter. Lost my daughter, County. Matter of fact, he was so upset over the loss of his daughter, he had to have something to calm his nerves. So he went to the little dresser drawer where he stashed his you know, his, 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 his wine or whiskey, whatever it was he had in there. And he had to get him a shot to try to get himself together. And, 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 and when, uh, when that happened, uh, the bottle, there was a note there with the bottle. He said, Daddy, uh, this is the only time I'll be able to celebrate my graduation. And I wanted to do something big and something great. So, so Daddy, I thought I would just borrow your bottle. Uh, and, you know, so I could have me a drink, uh, you know, to celebrate the end. You see what happened? His bottle caused her to lose her life. He was an enemy of his own daughter. But he wouldn't have, wouldn't have done that on purpose. That's how it happened. An unconscious enemy is a bad one. And, but it, 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 I you may even know of some cases about unconscious enemy. A woman whose house, a uh, uh, little grease in, in the skillet, got out of the skillet and caught the curtains, and she'd been fighting that and kept on until it burned the whole house down. Now, she didn't want her house to be burned down, but she was the worst enemy of her house herself. But what kind of enemy? She was an unconscious enemy. She was not aware of it. But this man whose daughter, uh, uh, you know, died in the wreck, uh, she was just as dead. If he had done it on purpose, he'd done it himself, actually. Just as did. Am I right? Y'all kind of loosen up here. Just talk back to me. Let me know I'm getting along here. <laughs> if you can't do nothing, I, I, gotta, I, I just spotted my buddy over there, boy. Robert, oh, man. Robert Woods, my old associate, go way back. And Robert knows what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. And uh, we, uh, an unconscious enemy can, can be uh, just as bad as one who is a conscious enemy. And when Paul said they are enemies of the cross of Christ, he was talking about those open, avowed enemies, those, infer, those idolaters and all of those Jews who despise Christ. But then to hear tonight, there may be some unconscious enemies of the cross of Christ. And uh, how do you go about to try to figure that out? How could that be? Well, first of all, when it comes down to Christ uh, and his death on the cross, uh, a lot of people, they honor and respect that. And yet and still, they are enemies of the very Christ that they honor. You say, well, how can that be, Brother Brady? That doesn't seem to make sense. Do you remember uh, a few years ago when one of the movie stars made a, a movie about the passion of, of Christ and it was... And if you saw it, it uh, he just had used some of his imagination, but it, it shows the brutality, how Christ was beaten bloody, and how they pressed these thorns, the crown of thorns on his head, and he showed how they drove the nails through his hands and through his feet. And uh, it, it, it's, just, it's very moving uh, to see uh, his idea and people's idea of how Jesus suffered on the cross. And, and yet... There are those who saw that and come out of the movie, no doubt, crying with tears. Oh, how our Lord died. And those very people who are saying that are enemies of the one they're crying about. Well, how can they be, Brother Brinkley? How can they be enemies? They are unconscious enemies of the cross of Christ. Well, can you explain that? Certainly, in this sense, they were unconscious enemies of the cross of Christ because Christ's death on the cross is like a two-sided coin. It has two sides to it. 
There are two parts to the story of the cross and Christ dying on the cross. There's the passion of it and the purpose. Now the passion, some of those very people that came out no doubt crying, oh, how our Lord died. Oh, oh, my, my, my. But then they are either ignorant of it or they do not respect uh, the purpose of his death. Why did he die? That's critical to know, the, know the, 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 the passion of it and not know the purpose of it is a tragedy. And we have many people who uh, understand the passion, brings them to tears, but they miss the purpose, what it was all about. And those who, who, ex, who talk about the passion and do not know or respect the purpose of his dying, then you're an unconscious enemy of the cross of Christ. Now, I need a little help. Just a little amen every now and then. Uh, and to see just, just, just where this thing is going. Enemies of the cross of Christ. They're enemies of the purpose of the cross. Uh, for example, uh, why did he die? Why did he go to the cross and die? When you stop wiping tears long enough to check and see why he died, if you don't, if you don't go along with the purpose uh, then the passion is wasted. Am I right? Uh, what was the purpose? We have a number of purposes. Time won't permit me to go into all of them, but I'll just get a few of them uh, so that you can, you can, can get it. I think uh, uh, the, the, uh, Jesus, the Bible tells us that Jesus went to the cross and he died on the cross. And uh, Colossians, uh, we might get several, get Colossians 2, 14 through 16. We're going to get several scriptures, and, uh, and, and then we're going to begin to see why he died. Because cause some of those same people that would come out of the movie crying over the, uh, the passion, and you discuss to them the purpose of his dying, and they get mad at you. They get mad at you and get mad and even reject the scripture by why he died. And that, that's a real tragedy uh, to cry over the passion and then get mad over the purpose of his death. Colossians, get me that, Colossians 2, 14 through 16. And we want to check several scriptures there and, and, and let's just see why, why, why did he die? What did he die? Okay. Yeah, that's good. Brought out the handwriting. I'll read on. That was against us. Contrary to us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So, so uh, Jesus, he, he died to take the old law out of the way. The Old Testament. The Old Testament could not make you perfect. Matter of fact, the only way that you could please God completely in the Old Testament, you had to live perfect. And Jesus was the only person that ever kept you perfectly. He never sinned. Everybody else sinned. And once they sinned, then they had a problem because uh, they couldn't remove their own sin. And then the only way their sin could be removed, it had to take something that they didn't have and somebody that they could not be. And that was Jesus Christ. Christ had to come into the world to die on the cross, shed his blood, because the blood of Christ is the only element that God would accept uh, to cancel out man's sin. And, and, and as long as the law stood, uh, man's sin could be moved forward for maybe about a year but the blood of animals, but you couldn't get rid of it. And if men died in their sins, then they would be lost eternally. And so what Jesus did, Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood on the cross to take away the sins of men, those who would meet uh, his requirements to reach that blood. Uh, but so many people uh, don't want to don't, don't accept the fact that he took the Old Testament out of the way. Did you know that in the average denominational church, most, if not all, much of that worship is devoted to commandments and things in the Old Testament. They use instrumental music. Where did that start? That was used in the Old Testament. Jesus took that law out of the way. Uh, they had all kinds of instruments. Jesus died and when he took that out of the way, he took uh, uh, Sabbath keeping out of the way. 
Am I right? Y'all might have quiet on me. He, he nailed all that to the cross. He took it out of the way. Sabbath keeping, he took that out of the way. And, and, and that was even a case uh, where a woman, I think the borough, she uh, was a kind of a judge over the people. There was a lot of stuff that went on under the old law that, that was allowed and permitted. But when Christ died, he took that law out of the way. If you were to read into the Old Testament, you would find back there that they had their choirs, they had their singers, they had their robed uh, men and this, that, and the other. They dressed differently uh, uh, from other folk, that is, the leaders of the worship. And it's just a whole, and then not only that, but they, they danced too. I think David danced before the Lord. What are you at, Brother Brinkley? Under the old law, many of these things were permitted. Dancing, uh, uh, holy dances before the Lord, use of uh, 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 instrumental music. And not only that, but eating uh, uh, certain meats were forbidden uh, under the law of Moses. And guess what? We got a lot of people doing that today. So why y'all have pianos and organs in your church? They said, well, David said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Well, Jesus died to take that law out of the way. Now, if Jesus died to take that law out of the way, and you and your preachers are steady running back there getting stuff over there to do over here, that show you don't respect why, for, for the purpose of his death. And when you do not recognize the purpose of Christ's death, then uh, it's just a front to go through the passion of crime. Passion without the purpose just messes things up. Are you following me? Uh, you, just keep running it back there and doing what they did. That law was taken out of the way. And if it was necessary, uh, needed it, the law wouldn't have taken it out of the way because it was in the way. It was in the way of the new law and the new church, the old Jewish church. All of that was taken out of the way. That's what the Bible teaches us. And yet, with that all being taken out of the way, they're steady going back there getting it. Yes, sir, going back there getting it and using it. I don't know of any denominational church that argues any stronger than the, that, 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 that they say, well, they, they praise God with the harps, they praise him with the instruments and all of these things and let everything up there, praise the Lord, they praise him. So where in the New Testament did they do that? I don't know about that, but I know they did it back there and said if it was good enough for David, it's good enough for us. <laughs> one preacher was arguing that point one time, said it's nothing wrong with doing these things back there that they did. That was a good law. And, and if it was good enough for David, it's good enough for us. One gospel preacher said, well, now, wait a minute. And this lady who was a, I think it was a Baptist lady, and her, her preacher was trying to defend instrumental music in the worship, and, and, and he, he brought up David, he says, good enough for David, it ought to be good enough for us, he's a sweet swing of Israel and all this kind of thing. And so this gospel preacher said, because uh, the lady seemed like she was falling for her pastor's explanation, it's all right to go back to the Old Testament and get things that they did back there. And, 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 and this music thing came up and said, if it's good enough for David, it ought to be good enough for us. And, and so the preacher said, the gospel preacher said, well, not, that ain't all David did. He did play on instruments, music. He said, he said David uh, took another man's wife. He committed adultery with another man's wife and then had the man killed too. David did that. Now, what about that? She was honest. You know what she said? She said, well, I'm through with David. <laughs> and, you know, and, and that's, sometimes that's all it takes to shock people into the fact uh, that, that the old law is gone. We're not supposed to practice the things that they practiced back there. If, it was, if, if Jesus died to move it and uh, the preachers and you're running back there to get it, that shows you don't appreciate it. Am I right? I, I illustrate maybe something like this. Here's a bunch of children uh, in the ghetto and they're out in, in the little park they got and they're playing and they don't have any swings or nothing to play with, no, no slides. Nothing, just playing with old tires and stuff. And this wealthy man said, now that's a shame. These, these kids need some kind of uh, safe things to play with. And so he's wealthy and he sent his trucks out there, his men, front end loaders, clear all of that stuff off, get it all out of the way. And, and not only that, but install some nice new stuff, fan, uh, 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 swings and all different kind of little toys to play with. And what would you think about this? And then here's some old guys they get junk and stuff, 
And because there was junk it before, they get some of that same old junk. Matter of fact, they go down there digging in the dump and get some of that same junk and stuff and stash it back there where it's been cleaned off. You say, well, that's, that's a disgrace. They don't appreciate that. Then move the junk out of there and then here they come bringing it back. That's the way it looks when denominational pe preachers go back to the old law to get stuff and bring it back over here to be used. We are to be a New Testament church. And everything that we do in practice is to be authorized by the New Testament. And, never, and don't you think now that they don't go over there. There's a group of people that call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Where did they get that? No authority for that in the New Testament. They misapply a passage over there where God said to Israel, you are, uh, uh, told Israel, you are my witness, said Jehovah. And even then God was not naming them. They had a name. Uh, uh, but they, he said, you are my witnesses, save Jehovah. And they run over there and they see where Jesus, uh, God was talking. So you are my witnesses, save Jehovah. They like that. And so they come back and now. So what are you? I'm a Jehovah's witness. Why did he get that? He went back to a law that Jesus had, had to die to move. He couldn't move the law without dying. He died to move the Old Testament out of the way. And when you are wrapped and tied and your preachers and your leaders got you doing a whole lot of Old Testament stuff, then you are enemies of the cross of Christ. You're working against what he died to move. You say, oh, I see now. Yeah, it says, you, you, if you study the purpose of Christ's death, uh, then, uh, you, 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 then, then and put them together with the passion, you got something. But crying over his death and ignoring why he died uh, is, is a tragedy. And makes you an unconscious enemy of the cross of Christ. You say, well, brother, I, I, I didn't know that. Uh, well, that's, that's what this lesson is about, to help you to understand that. And there are several things uh, uh, that Jesus uh, died to do. Not only did he die to take the old law out of the way, but he died to bring the Jew and the Gentiles together. They had been separated. The law of Moses had them separated. But Jesus already said before he left, he said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them will I bring. And then there will be one fold and one shepherd. Jesus knew that the Jews and the Gentile, they were all, you know, God created them all. And God did not want this division among them. And so, but he had to do something about it because the law separated them. But he said, I'm going to bring them together. And guess how he did it? He did it when he went to the tree of the cross. He broke down the wall that was between them. Broke down this middle wall, took it out of the way. And so that in Christ, you're neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, all one in Christ Jesus. No more uh, Jew special people, Gentiles, outcasts. In Christ, he brought them together. It took his death on the cross to bring them together. Well, now listen, if he did that to bring them together, and he said that would be one fold and one shepherd. The one shepherd is Christ. The one fold is his church. Christ established his church so he could bring all nations together in one body. It said by the cross. What did it mean by the cross? Through the means of the cross, Christ tore down the wall that separated the Jews and the Gentiles and brings them together in one place in one body, which is his church. That's why he died to bring them together in one body and in one church. And yet what happens? These denominational preachers and religious leaders, what did they do about that breaking down the wall? They built up, or they, it's up to now to several thousand walls. There are different ones starting different churches. Wall you off here. You my flock, wall them off there. Well, every time you start another denomination, you're building another wall, and Christ died to move the wall. We should, these preachers should be encouraged us all to come together and say, no more wall, one body. That's what the Bible teaches. All in the same body, in the same church. What church? The church that Jesus promised to build. He said, on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Before Jesus died, he prayed that they be one. He was praying for one church. He died for one church. Man, brothers, y'all, give me, give me an amen here. Y'all got me in the icebox. <laughs> Is that right? And I'm going to sweat and you got me in the icebox. Okay, all right. Okay. Robert knows about that icebox business because he used to be with Brother Keeble. But, but anyway, what I'm trying to do is to show you uh, that uh, the tragedy of uh, unconscious enemies, those who say they love Jesus so, love Christ, and love the, and some of them have the biggest crosses swinging from their necks. Big crosses on their building, 
and fighting against everything that cross was for. Are you following me? That makes you an enemy of the cross of Christ. And as I said, he died to bring us all together in one body. He said, by the cross. Through the means of the cross, there has to be one body. What is the body? Colossians 1 and 18, he's the head of the body of the church. Ephesians 1 22, hath put all things under his feet, giving him to be head of all things to the church, which is his body. The body is the church, and the church is the body, and Christ died to produce one body, one church. And we're all supposed to be members of that one church. And if we're not members of that one church, we're working against Christ. He died for that. And you say you believe in him and the cross, then, then show it by acknowledging and becoming a part of that which the cross produced. Amen. Now that's the part of it that people don't like. Oh, we could talk about it. Matter of fact, I, I did some research on it. And even the, uh, the, the, the old writers talked about Christ when he went to the cross, uh, how he was going to be and how that they would beat him. And some of the modern translations tell us that, they would, that when they whipped him, uh, you, could, you could not even hardly recognize his body. Just tore him all to pieces, beat him horribly before he went to the cross. Jesus was a pitiful sight to see. If I just labored on that and labored on that, people would say, oh, yeah, it ain't it awful how he suffered and died. Yes, it is. But if you are just go with the passion and ignore the purpose, then you're an enemy. The critical thing is the purpose. Why did he die? Nobody else could do it. He was the only one that could meet the, 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 the requirement, and he did that, and if it wasn't for him, we would be hopelessly lost today. So then, what did he do? He died to take away the old law because uh, the only way you could be justified in it was to be keep it perfectly, and none of them, the only person that kept it perfectly was Jesus Christ. And so he came up with a law uh, of grace, Grace is under the law of Christ. And when he died, he produced one church. I challenge any man to go and show where Jesus died and produced more than one church. He said, on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I mean, is it? That's only one. Even when the Old Testament talked about it in the future, it was it. Before it ever came into, uh, to, into reality. Isaiah said, it shall come to pass in the last day that the mountain of the Lord's house will be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hill and all nations shall flow unto it. When it comes, it's going to be it. Daniel said in the Daniel 2.44, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. It shall not be destroyed, but it will break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Then Jesus said when he got here, on this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Pastor Paul talked about it when it was in reality. Ephesians 5, 25, husband, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle in it, but that it should be holy and without blemish. How many is it? One. Well, that's what Jesus died. He died for it. Not T-H-E-M, them. If we've got them and he died for it, then those who are following them, then you just, just might as well stop saying you believe in Christ and you love him. And when you don't, they respect the purpose of his death. Whew, that's tough, isn't it? That's tough. So well, what do you do when the preacher's kind of hard and, and what he's saying? But if it's the truth, deal with it. If it's the truth, don't run off from it. It may be a little tough. But you, uh, say, if, if I'm invited to some one home, lady's home, she's not enough to invite me there. And, uh, and I sit down at the table and I start eating. And she has some steak. It looked really, really good. And, and I get me a piece of it. And, and I manage to cut through it with the knife. And I start chewing on it. And I discover that that, take, that steak is tough. Well, you know what I do? I, I would be, I would, that's not nice. I wouldn't say, ooh, it's tough. Ooh, I wouldn't say. That's a, I wouldn't do that. Never get back there again. But what do I do? I found out the thing to do is just, if it's tough, just chew on it. <laughs> is that right? Just chew on it. Keep on chewing, and you, you know what? You'll get the substance. Is that right? <laughs> so he just built one church. Chew on that. He took away the others. And to go back to the law of Moses, if you're practicing anything in your church, that the authority for it is the law of Moses then you 
uh, uh, ungrateful. Jesus took it out of the way and you're bringing it back. He said, well, I never thought of it that way. And so that makes you what I would call an unconscious enemy of the cross of Christ. So time is about gone. And we could number, give you a number of things to consider. But just simply this. Jesus died to take the Old Testament out of the way. It was in the way of what? Grace, the blood of Christ, the new church, his church. He died not only to take that old law out of the way, but he died to bring the Jew and the Gentile together that they may be in one fold. And I tell you what you could do. Any of these brothers, these, these gospel preachers, they could do this for you. You could take the word same in the New Testament when it goes to dealing with the church. And every time you see it nearly, it's going to be something about the same. The Jews and Gentiles, these fellow heirs, in the same body, in the same church, speak the same thing. Is that right? 1 Corinthians 1.10, same thing. And the Philippian brethren, he told them to walk by the same rule, same rule, same body, same church, same, same, same. The New Testament teaches Jesus died to produce the same one church, his church, church of Christ. He said, Ooh, that's tough. Chew on that. But I hope you get the substance before this, we extend the invitation. We're just about ready to extend the invitation. And uh, this lesson will require uh, uh, quite a bit of time uh, to de deal with all of it. So make sure that what you teach is New Testament teaching. And, and check your church out. You don't have to go and check it. You ought to know. Is anything that they're doing in your church that you can't find no authority for it in the New Testament, you have to go to the Old Testament, then you know that that's wrong because he took that out of the way and he nailed it to the cross. And these preachers, they went prize it back off. But don't you get caught up in that mess. Is that right? Oh, no. You say, well, preacher, I want to be a friend of Christ. Not only uh, uh, the passion of Christ, I want to go with the purpose. So in my conclusion, if you want to go with the purpose of the cross, as I said, it ought to be redundant. He died that we may all be put together in one body. Amen. And that body is his church. Right. He prayed for one church. Pray that we all be one. And he died for one church. Gave himself for it. He established one church. And all those that he saves he adds them to that church, Acts 2, 47, and said, the Lord added to the church, singular, those that were being saved, plural. All the saved that Jesus saved are added to that church that came into existence by the cross. It took the cross of Christ to produce the church of Christ. You cannot separate Christ's cross from his church to save your life. And if you reject the church of Christ, you just might as well kick the cross out because they go together. Am I right? They go together. That he might reconcile, Paul said, both unto God in one body by the cross. Through the means of the cross, Christ died through the means of the cross and produced the church where that you could be saved. And that church has all kind of goodies in it. Because in this church, when you sin, if you repent of it, it can be forgiven. The blood of Christ is there. It just keeps on cleansing you. Keeps on cleansing you. Thank God for that church. But he has not promised to cleanse or save anyone in any man-made institution. You say, well, that's enough for me, preacher. What? How do you get in there? It's very simple. It's about five steps. Like I mentioned last night, four steps unto the Lord's church. And one step in. The unto steps. Unto is a preposition of what I would call of direction. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You hear the gospel. That's unto. You believe. You repent. I believe uh, Paul says in, in Acts 11 and 18, if my memory is correct, the Gentiles will grant it repentance unto life. You hear the gospel of Christ. That's unto Christ and his church. You believe it. That's unto. You repent. That's unto. You confess, Romans 10, 10, confession is made unto salvation. That's the four steps, unto. Then you switch from the, uh, the, the, the direction step, that is in direction of salvation, you switch to one more. It's not an unto step. Baptism is, is not unto Christ. It's not. 
Paul says, for as many of us have been baptized into Christ. That's the into step. When you're baptized, then you are baptized into Christ. And when you baptize into Christ, then you in Christ. And if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. He's saved. All sins are washed away. Are you here tonight rejoicing over the fact that not only that I'm thankful that Jesus died for me. Let me say this in my conclusion. It was no easy thing for Jesus to go to that cross, suffer that awful death, die that terrible, painful death. So painful that when he was on that cross, you know the story of it. And the most moving part of it is when he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He was out there alone, Father, why have you forsaken me? But you know, we've all sinned and only Christ's blood is a proper sacrifice. Nobody else could save us from sin but him. And in order to do it, he had to take upon himself our sin. He doesn't be, be a sinner himself, literally, but he takes upon himself all of our sins. And his father uh, had to witness all of the sins of all the world laid on his shoulder. And somebody has said, Jesus went to the tree of the cross. And God suffered that when he said, my God, why have you, why have you forsaken me? God Suffered that his son have all that sin on him. Not that he committed, but he took the sins of the world on him. In other words, God made his own son like a sinner so we could become saints. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? He's not a sinner, but he took all of our sin and made him like a sinner and turned from him so we could become saints. In that church that he purchased with his blood. Is that someone here tonight said, oh, I understand the cross. Christ and his church more than ever. And, and I'd like to become a part of it. Well, we're going to stand and we're going to sing a song of encouragement. Inviting you to come. And if you're a member of the church and you've been treating the church like dirt, like it wasn't anything. And it cost the blood of Christ. You need to repent of that. You need to come forward and repent of it. Confess, ask forgiveness so you can leave right. And if there's anyone here that has not obeyed the gospel, everything is ready. Heaven is ready. The water is ready. And if you come forward tonight and make that confession, we baptize you into Christ, guess what's going to happen in heaven? Heaven's going to have a party. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's more joy, Jesus said, uh, in heaven over one sinner that repented. than 99 just person that need no repentance. You come for, you want to make heaven happy? You want to make Christ uh, happy that you appreciate his sacrifice? Then come on forward as we stand to sing this song of encouragement.